Here's the tricky question from the real test. But somehow, I have a feeling that you might come up with the answer. What is depicted upon combining the shaded parts of the given figure? Any of two rectangles with circles inside presented on the left. Each rectangle contains different circles. Some of them are white and some of them are filled with black. And you have four possible choices. Choice A, letter. Choice B, chart. Choice C, number. And choice D, shape. Can you visualize the answer? Give yourself five to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. As you can see, upon combining two rectangles, M can be formed, and M is the latter. The trick here is that typically during the test, you don't even have access to the paper, and you can't depict it on the paper or potentially using any other tools. So you have to visualize this in your memory. And that's the tricky part about this question. It seems easy once you know the answer, but the trick here is that you need to do it in your head. So what I did, and maybe it will work for you as well, I used the left rectangle as a base, and then I moved mentally some of the black dots from the right rectangle into the left rectangle to see which shape could be formed. And that's how I came up with the answer M. If you have a better way of solving this, please share in the comment section of this video. Let me share with you a tricky question from the test. I have confidence though that you might figure out the answer. Here's the question. What figure can be visualized upon combining the two rectangles? And you have two rectangles on the left. Both of the rectangles are seven by three and you have four different choices. Choice A, graph. Choice B, shape. Choice C, letter. And choice D, number. Do you see the answer? See if you can pause this video for 10 to 15 seconds to give yourself some time to figure out the answer. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct answer together. Let me explain to you how you can come up with the solution on your own. Upon merging of two rectangles, you can see that eight can be visualized and eight is the number. So the correct answer is choice D, number. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now here's the question for you to try. Which of the following does not belong to the group? I have full confidence that you can solve this challenge from the real test by yourself. You're presented with four different rounded squares. Each one has a shape inside. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? My tip for you, always look for patterns. So which of the following does not belong to the group? Maybe give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. And if you have figured out the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. I'm also planning to post a detailed answer in my future videos. So make sure to subscribe and review my latest videos on the topic to learn about the answer to this and other assessment test questions. Thanks for participating and good luck solving this challenge. Let's look at the interesting question which tests your pattern recognition skills. Determine the missing shapes inside the figure to complete the sequence. And you're presented with two by two figure. It has two missing shapes. And you have four possible choices. A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video and give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the solution? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. As usual, to solve these types of problems on the test, you need to look for patterns. And there are two patterns here presented. Number one is the diamond pattern in the middle. And number two is the pattern of shapes on the outside of the smaller squares which are unique. Outside shapes corners are always aligned with the corner of the smaller square as well. The two missing shapes also have similarities with other shapes present in the box. Upon combining, all triangles in the center form a diamond shape. Let's look at each one of these two patterns in more details. You should look for the triangle which matches the color, and upon combining, it should build a diamond. For pattern two, the missing shape in the upper right corner should complement the shapes with the corners that can be exactly placed in the box. 
In this case, we selected green rectangle. You also notice that there is a pattern of green color on the opposite side of the squares, same as the purple colors on the opposite sides of other squares. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar questions in the test. Let me share with you a tricky question from the test. Somehow, though, I have confidence that you might figure out the answer. Here's the question. Which of the following completes the missing part of the square? And you have 3 by 3 square, which consists of the smaller squares. Each small square has a star, and all stars are in the different corners. One small square is missing, and you have four different choices to figure out the final answer. Choices A, B, C, and D. Each choice has a star in a different corner. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's go ahead and jump straight to the solution. As usual, the best advice I can give you is always look for patterns. So there are multiple patterns going on. Let's look at each one of them. The first pattern is that the top and the bottom rows follow the similar patterns. You see the location of the stars for the top row, they are in the top, and for the bottom row, the stars are at the bottom part of the bottom row. If you follow the middle row, you will see that the stars in the middle row follow a completely different pattern. The first middle row star is at the top, then bottom, then the next one logically would be at the top again. You also see that the middle row stars are placed on the opposite sides of the top and bottom row stars. You see in the first column, the middle row stars in the upper right corner versus the top and the bottom rows which are placed on the left side. Same thing happens in the middle column and then assuming that we figured out the pattern, you will see that the same pattern will be applicable in the right column as well. This is why the missing star is placed on the opposite side of the stars in the top and bottom rows. Let's recap. Always look for patterns. The stars inside the box follow the pattern top and bottom row follow similar patterns and pattern in the middle row is very different. Notice that the first row and the last row stars are placed in the upper and left sections. Middle row stars though are positioned on the opposite side of the stars placed in other rows. Middle row stars also follow a pattern of upper, lower and then upper. Therefore the missing star is placed on the opposite side of the star in the first and last row at the upper left corner. So the correct choice here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question, and in case you didn't, you know how to answer similar problems on the test. Over the years, I built a checklist of what to do during the assessment day. Let's look at this checklist to see if it might be helpful for you as well. A lot of people, including myself, feel very anxious on the test day. Even though sometimes anxiety might be helpful to keep you on track in your preparation and make sure you deliver on your goals and commitments, during the test it is detrimental to have an anxiety. You need to be as relaxed as possible and calm down with all your worries. The best way to do it is to get a good night's sleep before the test day as well as eat very good breakfast to make sure you have positive energy flowing through your body. Very frequently you have an opportunity to complete the test from home. Even though it might be a good idea, it's very important to understand that you need to find a comfortable place where you will avoid the distractions. I heard the cases when people were locking themselves in the closet or in the bathroom just to make sure that they don't have any noises or interruptions and can fully concentrate during the test. Any distractions might be extremely detrimental and it's very important to find a quiet place inside your house. I recommend that you find a comfortable and quiet place wherever you're planning to take the test to make sure that disturbances or distractions don't have any impact on your test score. A lot of providers share with you specific written instructions or introductory video on how to complete the test. It is very, very important for you to carefully read them, watch the video and understand. If you're unsure what to do during the test, make sure to ask and contact your administrator before starting the assessment. A lot of test providers and administrators allow notepad and calculator. Please make sure to check what's allowed in your particular situation and you probably can do it ahead of time. And once you know, make sure you bring these items into the test room. And last but not least, a lot of times there is a practice before the test. This is something that provider or administrator allows you to do just to make sure that your equipment operates as expected. Make sure you do this and don't miss this option before starting your test.
Here's the tricky question from the real test. But somehow, I have a feeling that you might come up with the answer on your own. Which of the following is formed when the shaded parts of the blocks are combined? And you have four different choices. Choice A, number. Choice B, shape. Choice C, letter. And choice D, chart. On, on the left, you're presented with two blocks. There are two four by five blocks, and each block has white and shaded circles. See if you can come up with the answer and determine what happens when all these blocks are combined. Give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see if we can solve this challenge together. The best way to solve these types of questions is to imagine a new block and understand what is formed when all the shaded circles are merged together from two original blocks. And upon merging, you will see that the heart is formed, which is represented here in the third block. And heart is a shape. So the correct answer here is choice B, shape. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Let's look at the tricky question which tests your knowledge of reasoning as well as the math skills. Here's the question. By analyzing the figure using a mathematical operation, how many stars should be present in the missing part of the circle? And you have a circle broken down into four equal parts. Three parts of the circle already have stars, and they have one, two, and then three stars. And you have four different choices. Choice A, two, choice B, 3, choice C, 4, and choice D, 5. So can you determine how many stars should blank part of the circle have? Give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see if we can come up with the solution together. As usual, to answer any type of question, look for patterns. And here, the pattern is symmetricity. So if you draw the line, in the middle of the circle from top to bottom you will see that you need to come up with the answer that would be symmetrical there are multiple ways to solve this challenge and we got a hint that we should use mathematical operation we take the star from the left of the blank part of the square and add number of stars from the right part of the blank square and we get one plus two which is equal three you can also use subtraction to come up with the answer can you figure out how to use subtraction to get to the similar answer. If you figure out the subtraction answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. Let me share with you a tricky question which tests your pattern recognition and visual reasoning skills. Which of the following completes missing parts of the square? And you're presented with the 4x4 four four square, which contains different smaller squares inside and four possible choices. Choice A, B, C, and D. Do you recognize the pattern? Now might be a good time to pause this video and give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. Interesting question, isn't it? But as usual, look for patterns. If you look closely, you will see that the middle box right in the center of the larger square is symmetrical. So the L shape at the bottom and then another shape in the upper right corner, they represent symmetricity for this middle square, which consists of the four small squares. Couple important considerations when answering this question. Two white boxes designed to confuse you. Lower left part of the larger square only has three white spaces in the form of L shape similar symmetrical pattern follows in the upper right corner. This is why the missing part consists of the shaded part which completes the square in the center. So the correct answer here is choice A. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Let me share with you a tricky question which tests your pattern recognition as well as logical reasoning skills. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? And you're presented with rectangle, which has multiple squares. And one of the squares is missing. It has a question mark inside. And you have four different choices, A, B, C, and D. Take a close look 
to see if you can come up with the answer. Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Did you figure out the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. There are a couple tricky parts about this question. Number one is the general flow of squares. And then there is a sequence of arrows inside the squares. For example, we're starting the flow right here, not in the corner. It's kind of in the middle of the upper row. And then you need to follow the red arrows for the general order. The arrows inside the squares rotating clockwise. And what you can see is the arrowhead for that smaller arrow always points to where it was located in the previous box. So the correct answer here is choice A. I truly hope that you've nailed this question and got to the correct answer on your own. But in case you need more questions or practice problems, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Let me share with you a tricky question which tests your reasoning, analytical, as well as visualization skills. Which of the following completes the missing part? And you're presented with two by two box. One of the square in the big box is missing. And you have four different choices to choose from. A, B, C, and D. Take a closer look and see if you recognize the pattern. Do you think you know the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Give yourself 10 or 20 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you come up with the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. Tricky question, isn't it? But as usually, all tricky questions always have the answers. So take a look here. There are four shapes inside the square. And each shape has a unique color. Shapes stay in place. The only thing that changes is the black color for the shape. And what you can see is that the pattern of the black colors inside the squares and it rotates counterclockwise. So, as usual, always look for patterns. You see that the flow among the shapes starts in the upper left corner and flow goes clockwise. But the rotation of the black color inside the squares goes counterclockwise. So, that's the tricky part of the question. But there is always the right answer. And as you can see, the right answer here is choice D. Let's recap always look for patterns. In this case, there are four shapes and each shape has a unique color. Color black rotates inside the square, but same shapes stay in their original position. And the rotation inside the squares is done counterclockwise. So hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And here's the question you can try to solve on your own. Which of the following comes next in the sequence? You are presented with four different squares, and each square has another figure inside. And there are four possible choices, A, B, C, and D. Now might be a good time to pause this video and give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. One tip for you, always look for patterns. If you figured out the answer, feel free to post the answer in the comment section of this video. Also, please make sure to post your rationale so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck on this challenge. Let me share with you an interesting question which tests your reasoning skills. Determine which of the following is missing and you're presented with the large square which could be logically broken into three by three small squares and four different choices. Choice A, B, C and D. You have a missing square in the bottom left corner do you think you can figure out the answer? Now might be a good time to pause this video and give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to see if you can figure out the solution. Do you have the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this puzzle and get to the correct solution together. We presented with the very interesting challenge here, but challenge could be broken down into two patterns. The first pattern is the flow of small squares around the middle, and the second pattern is the flow of triangles inside the small squares. Pattern one rotates clockwise and starts in the upper left corner. You see that the pattern rotates around the cent clock, which is in the middle, and cent clock does not participate in the pattern. And pattern two is determined based on where triangle touches the lines of the small square. For example, the triangle in the upper left corner touches the lines of the small square in the center, 
you see on the top, as well as down at the bottom. Next one touches on the left and down. The following one touches in the up and also in the center. And you can continue this pattern to determine the missing item, which is choice B. It was a tricky question, but I hope by now you know what to look for and how to answer similar problems on the test. But in case you need more questions or practice problems, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our daily question challenge in the community section of this channel. I also recommend that you check downloads in the description section of this video. Please also check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. I would encourage you to share this video with other people that might be looking for the job. This will help them to get prepared and pass assessment test faster. Please consider subscribing and following this channel. We have community of great people helping each other to get ready and pass the test. Please leave questions, comments, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your interview and assessment test. Thanks for watching.